Hey guys, welcome back to my channel again. It's been so long, so I hope you guys been doing great. So today, um, I'm going to do a recap of all the components that I buy from two years ago, right? So that you guys have an idea how is it going? Is it actually worth it? Is it, you know, um, worth the money? You know, the time spent, the kind of stuff to actually build a PC of such caliber. Okay, so today we'll do it into two parts. So part one is basically I'll be doing a recap of what other items that I bought. And then second part will be basically um, I'm going to show you what is it like uh, to install everything inside a computer. Okay, so basically without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing first, um, I got this 950X CPU. Um, the reason why I buy this is basically because I don't actually want to try Intel anymore. So I wanted to give uh, AMD a shot. Um, so far, it's been doing pretty good, right? Um, have not have any hiccup at all. Definitely, there's no much difference performance. Uh, you know, like I don't feel any difference. Like there's more bugs from AMD compared to Intel. Um, maybe slightly a little bit more, a little bit bug. Um, but maybe that's just can be fixed by software issue. Um, but overall, I'm quite satisfied with this 7950X. But um, to be honest, you'll be a bit underutilized, which I'll share with you, um, you know, in the next few videos, um, why, what are the things that you need to take note, okay, when you are buying a CPU for your gaming rig. Okay, so the next thing that I actually uh, wanted to share with you guys is basically um, the GPU that I bought. Okay, so far, um, I've been using the Zotac uh, the 4090. So basically, this is the highest end of NVIDIA's uh, 40 series card. So the reason why I bought the Zotac is basically number one is um, even though I'm doing water cooling but I like the um, the overall design of this card and uh, to be honest right now nowadays the performance difference between the different AIBs are actually quite minimum right is uh, depending on which brand you like you are a fan of and then you actually go with uh, you know the specific brand um, for me personally, for Zotac, I don't really use their Firestorm um, the software. Usually, because I'm doing water cooling now, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, usually, when I do water cooling, I just control the lighting through the um, the, the Asus Asus uh, basically they are the the Aura Sync uh, software. So so far, I haven't been using Firestorm, but I see that that's quite a bit of people feedback that the Firestorm is actually quite buggy. Um, but so far I haven't experienced it so I can't share my experience but so far in terms of gaming wise um, I don't to be honest even though I buy this super high end card I don't really game at those like triple A titles like for example Cyberpunk or the so um, I usually use it for CSGO Apex Legends but I'm intending to actually play more triple A titles just to test it out, test this game. I know it's been two years. I should have just done it, you know, initially, but I was too busy with work. So um, yeah, I'm be spending a little bit more time gaming to test out the full potential of this graphic card. Um, yeah, and then after that, we can actually do a review again of this graphic card, right? So the next component I'm going to share with you guys is the power supply. So I, as you guys know that I actually got a 7950X and the uh, the 4090. So basically, the currently those are uh, power drawn from all this kind of component uh, at this era is considered quite huge, right? So basically, um, there's no reason, actually no reason for you to get a 1600 watts power supply. For me personally, I just want to buy and then just get it done and over with. So this will stay with me all the way, uh, you know, throughout all my uh, upgrading component until this uh, can't function anymore or it's out of warranty. So that's my purpose of buying, uh, you know, this uh, power supply. So far, it has been doing very, very good. Um, no issue at all. It's been powering my um, my 4090 and my 7950X. Has been perfectly fine. There's actually no big uh, uh, issue. It's just that initially, um, you know, I had some technical issue with my this um, my motherboard or my CPU. Sorry. Um, so. I initially thought it was this problem, but actually it's not. Okay, which I'm gonna share with you on the part two uh, of the video uh, of what happened, and then uh, probably it might be because uh, some of you guys might have faced this issue, so probably you might you know try what I have done so that you know just to make sure that you get it fixed. Okay, so um, Corsair AX 
hundred sixteen hundred uh, I uh you uh this uh, power supply I think is perfectly fine. Uh, but just that of course when I shared earlier, you don't have to get this. Um, it's very uh overkill. Uh, usually you can actually just use a, a voltage calculator. I can I think you can find it online so that you know how much voltage you actually need, and then you just add in some more just to have a little bit of buffer, so that um it's completely fine with your computer. Okay, so actually the PSU. Um, yeah, that's what I go for. Um, it's just my personal preference. I go for this just to get future proof uh, so that I don't need to keep changing power supply every time I upgrade a rig. So this will follow me all the way. And yes, this one, um, it doesn't come with the, the new pin from the GPU. So we still use the legacy pin and then connect it to the, uh, to the GPU. Later I'll show you how it's been set up. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I got the G Skill RAM. So I've been using G Skill for very long. Um, one thing I really like about their product is basically, um, I think their customer service is fantastic because um, I had one that I buy from Amazon, I think three years ago, I think three or four years ago. Um, I just um, do a replacement with them because I think there was some, I was doing water cooling. Um, and then there were some stains. I think it was because of uh, water evaporate or something. I can't. I don't really can't really tell what is causing it. So I actually emailed them. Actually, it's already out warranty, but they actually did a one time replacement for them. Uh, for me. So that's why I actually stick with uh, G Skill. I actually emailed their Taiwan's uh, uh this uh, customer service, and they actually uh, replied to me quite promptly. So that's why I actually this time I actually went for G Skill. Um, so far all my RAM I've been using G Skill, no problem at all. I think their I think their service is fantastic. So that's why this time I actually went for the DDR5 uh, for the G Skill, right? So that's the RAM for my this current rig. Okay, so for my NVMe in uh, or basically my storage in my com, uh, I reuse some of my previous uh, Samsung NVMe that kind of stuff. So I think it's still working fine. So I actually bought two, um, this, um, I'll say, what is this called, uh, XPG Gaming S7, S70 Blade. Okay, so um, the reason why I buy this is because um, I think it's quite affordable. Okay, it's the Gen, uh, I think it's the Gen 4 uh, PCIe 4 uh, NVMe, which at the point of time is very expensive, right? But for now, uh, that time when I look at this, I thought, hey, why not I give you a try because uh, you know it's quite affordable but actually um, unfortunately one of them died the, SS, the NVMe so I didn't have the chance to go and uh, service it so that is the that's the issue when you're doing water cooling you can't just take out the component and then you just replace it or take out to actually do an exchange you need to drain the whole loop you need to access it through the, uh, the motherboard that kind of stuff it's not as easy so uh, yeah, I was I will need to actually I think I'm out of warranty, but I'll try to get a, a replacement from them. Um, for some reason, the system can't recognize uh one of the NVMe. I don't know which one. I bought two. So if you ask me, um, I've been seeing a lot of bad reviews uh through Reddit. Um, you can look, go and look it up yourself. Um, a lot of people are facing the same problem as me because they can't actually detect um uh, the NVMe. Uh, suddenly right so there's no way to fix it you need to get a replacement um so i think in the long term if you really want my suggestion is just get a more well-known brand like samsung nvme that kind of stuff um yeah i think that'll be more reliable it's not that i'm saying this brand is not good it's just that personal opinion this is my very first time trying them and i think this is the first time uh, i experienced a failure in the NV and uh, in the nvme storage so it kind of like Give me a bright impression but it might not happen to everyone um, it's affordable i would say but the thing is yeah it's quite tedious to actually change everything when you have this kind of faulty uh, nvme okay so you will i say recommend it i would say if you not doing water cooling yes you can give it a try because if you're not doing water cooling you can just take out a graphic card and then you just switch off uh, you just take out this NVMe and do it, uh, and do a change, right? So it really depends on the situation, okay? So the last thing that I actually want to share with you guys is this motherboard. This motherboard costs, uh, I think it's thousand to uh, sing dollars, right? So I think it's around $800 US. So this is the 
the most high end, the X670E Extreme uh, from ASUS. I use this to power the, um, the AMD 7950X. So usually for my case, um, I always tend to go um, the maximum that I can. Uh, of course, depending on budget, but for me, I will usually go with the maximum just to make sure that I do future proofing. But I'll share in the next video why uh, my thought process like that is wrong when I first initially buy this. So I'll share with you more details of my thought process and how can a normal consumer like you guys uh, think, right? And then after that, um, and then decide what kind of motherboard already fits your budget. Okay, this is really not the ideal way of uh, buying PC parts. This is um, as good as throwing money uh, in the sea. So, um, but I already bought it, so I'm still con con going to continue to use it. But I'm going to share with you my thought process on why I think that um, what are the different specs that you need to look up for, for a motherboard, for a GPU, for a power supply, so that you can make the best decision to um, decide which brand, which um, uh, uh, which, pro uh, which processor, which motherboard, which graphic card, which power supply that you should go with um, that fits your uh, budget and don't actually overspend on PC like me. Right? So I made a big mistake when I built this entire PC, I actually go all in uh, and then after two years, I really think that it's not really, really worth it for my use case. Right? So uh, with, that for the, with, that, with that aside, so let's go on to part two, which I'm going to show you all this component inside the PC uh, that I've built now. But anyway, my case is the Corsair 1000D, super overkill case, um, not necessary. Um, but I bought it because it looks nice. Um, but if you ask me whether do I regret it, no, I don't regret it. I think it's still a fantastic case uh, for my use case because I do water cooling uh, and I prefer to have more space, uh, you know, to actually work around for my water cooling, right? Okay? So let's go to the part two. I'll show you how is it like, um, you know, to put everything together in the water cooling system and then you will be the judge to see whether does it worth it or not, right? See you in the next section. Okay, so here's the CPU that I bought, the whole PC, right? So everything you saw just now is all inside here. So for the fan, I bought the Dendi um, Infinity fan because I like the side mirror right reflection so here's the Zotac 4090 that I talked about so this is the I customized this cable right and then it's linked to the CPU right so I think it's via 3 8 pin if I'm not wrong okay so I customized this power cable as well so the whole com is actually um, powered by water cooling doing the water cooling over here so far it's been very quiet and here's the GSQ RAM, okay? And then here is the 7950X, right? So that's the 1490, right? And then here's the, I reused the two NVMe, and then um, I have two more um, mounted on the on the motherboard, okay? But one of them, I actually have two just now, is spoiled. Okay, so all this whole uh, PC is being run through the Bits Power um, water cooling. Right, so, um, but this one I use the um, the heat killer, one of the best CPU cooler for water cooling. Right, and then, uh, yep, so this is basically the whole setup. Okay, so, I love RGB. <laughs> okay, so guys, so this is actually all the PC components that I have done, uh, or I've showed you, right, in, uh, in the box format and also, um, when it's be being built up. Okay, so for the next few series of video, I'm going to do is basically to uh, share with you um, from part by part. So for CPU, what are the things, what are the stats that you need to take note of to make sure that you are picking the correct CPU for your next PC build because there is still a lot of people that is um, like me. Um, I'm also one of the culprit that I actually overspend on PC, right? And of course, it's not that you can't go to those um, boutique uh, PC builder shop, but it's just that I feel that sometimes if you know a little bit more, you will be able to go to online platform like in Singapore, in uh, Lazada, Shopee to get a cheaper deal and then you can build it yourself, right? So that's my just my personal opinion. So um, over the, like I shared with you, over the next few videos, I'm going to share with you in, in more detail, uh, in breakdown, Different individual parts, CPU, GPU, PSU, uh, basically power supply, RAM, 
and also fans, right? So these are the few things that I think uh, most most likely people will overspend. So I'll give you in detail what are the different usage that you can or different specs that you can look for depending on the situation and what is it for so that you have a clear understanding on what is it and before you pull the trigger to buy your product so you can actually make the better decision when buying the PC component, okay? So stay tuned for the next few videos. I'm going to restart all over again the YouTube channel and then uh, please subscribe if you have not and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!